Welcome to our worship service on this Pentecost Sunday. Uh, we would appreciate still uh, having you fill out the, the little uh, slip of paper where you're sitting so that if we ever had to do contract tracing, we could uh, get that accomplished efficiently. Uh, Coffee Fellowship this morning is returning. Uh, we're going to be, because of the iffy weather, we're going to be upstairs uh, in the social hall, so we hope you'll, uh, you'll stop up and, uh, and say hello to uh, your fellow members. Uh, beginning on June 13th, the second Sunday of June, the Sunday after Children's Sunday, we'll begin our, doing our second service again. We're going to do it at 8.30 rather than 8, 8 o'clock. So, Jim, if you can wait until then, you know, we'd love to get that 8 o'clock crowd back. Um, the service is going to be outside, weather permitting, and we'll find ways of communicating that probably on the, on the Facebook page or something like that. And, uh, and it'll be similar to this, a little more simple. We won't have the special music, but we will be able to sing. And so Rhonda and I will figure out something that uh, you can be singing outside and, uh, and raising your voices in praise. So uh, we look forward to that. And you are absolutely welcome to attend both services. So, you know, there'll be no problem with that. Uh, the last meeting of the men's Bible study is going to be June 2nd, and then they're going to go on hiatus. Um, we are looking for a new leader of that men's Bible study, so if you uh, enjoy getting up at the crack of dawn and have knowledge of the Bible, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, and finally, beginning with its meeting on the 1st of June, women's ministry will meet at 7.30 outside near the parking lot door. Bring your Bible and a lawn chair and join them. So let's continue now with our service of worship. I just want to say it's so beautiful to see everybody's bright smiling faces here. So, yeah. Can do that. Well, please join me in the call to worship. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. I will rejoice and be glad in the God of my salvation. Peace. 
Please join me in the prayer of invocation. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, on this day of Pentecost, may our hearts be glad and our spirits rejoice as we gather to worship you. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit and for the Church that binds us together. Let your blessings rest upon us worship together this morning. Hear us now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Realize, but Michael Chittum has been our national executive for six years? Six. Almost, Almost six. six. Almost six years. Come on over. Okay. Come on. We've got to get in the wheel. We're, we're live. Oh, yeah. you know? <laughs> and, and you have been a part of our fellowship, um, not only in your leadership role with the National Association, but uh, uh, you've been a good friend. And Michael and Vicki as a token of our love for you and of our appreciation of your service, not only to the National Association, but to this church, we'd like to present you with this basket of Wisconsin-themed items. <laughs> a little cutting board. Is this, cutting is, board? Okay. this is for the, for the trip down, you know. There's uh, ooh, a whole bunch of kinds of oh Wisconsin my. cheese. Oh my oh my and using your sausage. Your kind of beer, Sprecher Rip right here. <laughs> and something for you to remember. It. I have a wonderfully talented uh, younger sister who's an art teacher, and so she burned that into the back for me. So it says, Best wishes, uh, love, You're your Wauwatosa church family. Cool. How about that? No eating during the sermon. No drinking during the sermon. Oh, could you stay up here? Sure. Because I want to talk to everybody about why you're wearing that cool red stole. It's my favorite. It looks pretty good on you, just saying. This was actually, and I can, I can say that especially, I'm trying to see where she went. Where's Sandy? There you are. This was a gift from the Bookmans and the Clarks, my, my two greatest mentors. 39 years ago, and it still looks new because you only get to wear it once a year, so. <laughs> it's beautiful. Well, and you know why it's red? Well, I know it's Pentecost today, but I need to know a little bit more, and the kids need to know a little bit more. Red has been the, the, the color of the spirit. Mm. Uh, when, when I graduated, you know, the hoods are red, so, you know, for theology and so on. But, but Pentecost was really the birthday of the Christian church. Awesome. Yeah, and I mean, from that day, when they all, these people, all different people, that spoke different languages, they looked different from each other, and they really didn't get along with each other. Mm. And they were all together, and all of a sudden they could understand each other. And that was the birthday of the Christian church. And it was the Holy Spirit speaking through them. Right. You know, I. I do have to say, when you think about the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I think people get the God part and the Jesus part, but that Holy Spirit thing can be a little confusing. So today, though, we celebrate that Holy Spirit in us. And well, you can't see it. 
Right. But that's what they described it as, the rush of a mighty wind. And it filled the whole room. And it affected everybody. In such a great, great way. Well, and happy birthday to the church. Amen. We can Amen. sing happy birthday, but... <laughs> Not with me. Mm -mm. I got a loud voice, but I cannot sing. So, can <laughs> we say a prayer? Say yeah. a little prayer. Great Excellent. God, loving Father, we, we thank you on this birthday of the Christian church for all the support and all the friends we have here. And we ask that you bless our fellowship as we move forward to do your will. In Jesus' name. If any three-year-olds through fifth graders want to go to Sunday school, you can come on along. Our lesson this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native languages? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamph Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. Here ends the reading of the gospel.
this morning. In particular, I want to talk about the vibrations of the Holy Spirit. Those were especially good vibrations in that vernacular expression. Good vibes. I'm picking up good vibes. I'm picking up good vibrations. Thank you, Beach Boys. We went from that amazing cello duet straight to the Beach Boys. You got to stay flexible here, I think. I'm picking up good vibrations. She's giving me excitations. Well, okay, that's probably not the Holy Spirit they're talking about there. But I'm thinking I'm, thinking I'm going to in this sermon, the Holy Spirit. She is precisely that, a mysterious, fickle, unmistakable, irresistible force that gave birth to the church and will sustain it if anything can. Good vibrations. A personal confession. First, I'm, I'm thinking about vibrations as a theological idea because an old seminary friend is trying to write a book about God that takes quantum physics seriously. He told me that on the phone and I said, why? But he's one of those academic types. And, and where this came from was the idea of the luminous web. And I'm fascinated by that idea. That all our actions, whether loving or not, small or very significant, they all vibrate. They vibrate some strand of the web that encompasses all that is. As if one were plucking a string on a cello which if everything really is connected to everything else will set the whole web trembling, vibrating, and it'll change the world. You see, what I'm trying to say is that we're all entangled, not, not just in the physics of creation, but in the tonality of creation. Listening to the cellos, it's, it's all about the vibration, the strings. And when Rhonda plays the piano, the piano hammers hitting the strings. And the air moving through the different sized pipes of the organ, all producing those pitched vibrations in harmony with, with Jill's vocal vibrations. And then it's all sent out over the air as, as packaged tonal vibrations to make harmony. And what is harmony? Well, if you stand too close to me, you'll know I have no idea about harmony, but... Whatever else music is, it's, it's at least this. It's choreographed harmonic vibration, good vibrations. And, and this morning when I see all of your faces, I'm picking up good vibrations because it moves us, it lifts us, it, it excites us when we're together. I'm picking up good vibrations. The Holy Spirit is giving me excitations, good vibrations. I dare you not to be humming that when you leave this morning. Now about Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had come, and, and listen closely here, they were all together in one place. So rule number one is the Holy Spirit prefers a gathering, prefers it to a collection of isolated individuals. And suddenly from heaven, and when I think heaven here, I don't think up, but rather from God, from good, from the place of the sacred, there came a sound like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled the entire house. So what's the first metaphor to describe the arrival of the Holy Spirit? It's sound, not form, not a visual, not anything that's seen, but, but good vibrations, like the rush of a mighty wind. The ancients, you see, were, were fascinated with wind because wind was a force you couldn't see, but you could see the effects of. And, and of course, you can hear wind as well. And notice this. The wind fills the entire house. It's, it's an indiscriminate force. It doesn't pick and choose, but... It expands into all the available space, kind of like, I don't know, love. Then here comes the most famous metaphor for Pentecost, divided tongues as a fire rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, 
there's a shift here to a visual image, and it's a classic one. Re remember a, a pillar of fire guided Moses out of the wilderness, and then God appears in a burning bush, which is not consumed? And now the, the disciples have become individual burning bushes. I mean, if you want to be literal about it, their heads are on fire, but they're not consumed. And yet, the effects of this euphoria was not visual, but it was acoustical. Namely, they began to speak in other languages. They, they became multilingual, and not a single one of them had a PhD. The power of this metaphor may be hard for, for us to understand, but it, it wouldn't have been to an observant Jew. It's obvious what this is all about. In the story of the Tower of Babel, from which we get our word for speaking, it tried to, to build a tower, remember? So high that it would pierce the clouds and give the mere mortals access to heaven and to be with God. And so to punish them, what does God do? He confuses their tongues. It, it makes it impossible to complete this project. Nobody can understand anybody, but it serves also to explain why God would have allowed the, a world where there's all these different languages to begin with. I mean, wouldn't it have been easier if we all spoke the same language, you know, for peace and harmony among the nations? Save money on interpreters? Wouldn't that be good vibrations? So the Spirit arrives at the birth of the church as wind, and its, its primary effect is to overcome the fundamental separation that is, that is that I don't understand. Because next to race, that's what separates us fundamentally. It's language. So the Holy Spirit shows up, and all of a sudden, I understand you. I comprehend you. I, 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 can, I can understand what you're saying. I get you. Even though you're a Parthian and I'm an Elamite, I understand what you're saying. Suffice it to say that these people, these groups, did not all get along with each other. But they somehow there started picking up good vibrations, and the Holy Spirit gave them that excitation. Here's a little piece of great biblical trivia for you. Did you know that in Acts 2, there is, there is the only story in the Bible in which a crowd is described in advance of the message given to the crowd? Do you know why? Because here, the crowd is the message. In fact, Luke tells this story as if it's some kind of big class reunion that's gone awry, as if everyone is supposed to have their own space, the Parthians with the Parthians, and the Medes with the Medes, and over there, there are the Elamites, and they're with the other Elamites. And then, maybe because of a mix-up or maybe divine conspiracy, there's so little space available at the Harvest Festival they all end up in the gymnasium together, listening to the same music. It was, it was a Jesus band. And suddenly, everybody looks across the room at each other, and they, and they couldn't even be sure who was with them and, and who was against them. Who was the Democrat? Who was the Republican? Who's the liberal and who's the conservative? They don't even know what language sp they spoke or whether God had chosen them or anointed them or, or what God even thought of them. And maybe, maybe someone just decided to just shout out, I guess we're all in. Everybody's in. Graduates of the love of God and, and either all of us matter or, or none of us do. And then what I'd really like to imagine is, is then this visitor from Rome crossed the room and asked the Cretan to dance. 
I, I love this story. This is the beginning of the church because the message is so clear. If you're going to take yourself out of the party, you'll have to do that all by yourself. Go sit in the corner all by your lonely and frightened self and try to figure out who the cool kids are. Peter figured it out. And the church would never be the same. He said this, I understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what's right is acceptable. Really? Anyone? As in everyone? Wow. Fred Craddock, who was our Bible lecturer at the National Association meeting a few years ago, tells us a story of early in his ministry when he sat down with a church committee in a, in a little tiny rural parish in Tennessee. They were trying to decide for themselves what, what the definition of a member was. Who could be a member of this little church in Tennessee? And who could not? Well, in, in those days, the Manhattan Project was in full swing, and in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, where this little church was, there was also a major research site. All these workers had come from all over the place for the jobs. You know, they came from Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt. They came from parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene. And some of them, you know, they were living in trailers because, because they were migrants. But they wanted to come to Fred's little church, and the elders would have none of it. So they passed a resolution. Only people who own property in this county will be considered for membership in this church. Whereupon Fred said, I resign. Well, the elders were stunned and they said, okay, so Fred, calm down. What do you suggest as, as a policy for, for what qualifies a person to be a member of this church? And Fred said this, he said, how about this? We will reject as members only those people we think Jesus would have rejected. And we will accept only those we think Jesus would have accepted. Well, that was followed by a, a long, awkward silence. And then they fired him anyway. <laughs> Nothing is as offensive to ordinary people as the grace of God. To finish the story, years later, Fred returned to the site of that little church. And it's now a barbecue joint. And Fred said, really, it's a better barbecue joint than it was a church. He said, for one thing, it serves a much more diverse crowd. You've got your Parthians and your Medes and your Elamites, and, and you know what holds them all together? They all love barbecue. And I love the end of this story, too, because people were seeing all this going on, and they couldn't come up with a rational reason why these people shouldn't be able to, should be able to stand each other. And they're acting like this big, rowdy family. So the only thing that they could come up with is this. Well, they're filled with new wine. I, I mean, maybe they are, but not necessarily. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. But maybe they're not drunk on wine. Maybe they're just picking up those good, good, good vibrations. Good vibrations are the currency of caring. I mean, listen to what people say. Oh, it's just so good to hear the sound of your voice, to see your face. When a loved one calls or whispers words of encouragement to you, or sometimes when we just look at the world and we see the beauty of it clearly, and, and we feel suddenly a part of everything. Then this, this shudder runs down your spine and you can call it goosebumps or good karma or good vibes. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's the way the world is made. 
Vibrations are happening. Dr. King said we are constant page turners in each other's lives. Not a quote he's well known for, but this one he is. We must all learn to live together as brothers and sisters, or we will perish together as fools. We're tied together into a single garment of, of destiny, caught in an inescapable network of mutuality. And whatever affects one directly, said Dr. King, affects all indirectly. I believe the church needs to divorce itself from doctrine and dogma and just get married again to wisdom. We need to teach and preach a theology of consequences, not a theology of obedience. Connect the dots, and if you can't connect all of them, just have faith that they'll be connected beyond our ability to understand. When we do a good deed, but somehow it seems to backfire on us, you know how we have this saying, no good deed goes unpunished? I don't believe that's true. For one thing, a deed is it, a good deed is its own reward, but for another, we don't see all the consequences because of our spiritual vision is so limited. We want everything to happen quickly in ways we can see and, and celebrate, and that's selfish. I think the truth may be something closer to this. No good deed goes unrewarded. We just don't know how or when or where. And we have a name for that deep trust. This leaning into uncertainty with confidence. We call it faith. And you know, I've been seeing some of those tongues of fire above your heads lately. People may think we're strange over here, and, th and that's okay. I'm sure some people think we're drunk, but, but they're wrong. We're just picking up and, and passing on good vibrations. Good, good vibrations. The Holy Spirit's given us excitations. So there you have it. Pentecost and the Beach Boys. Amen.
In our caring corner this morning, uh, if you have not yet met the young, youngest and newest, or not the youngest, I guess, well, I guess it is the youngest uh, member of the um, Scarlatta family, uh, Rafi is uh, uh, officially a uh, gotcha now, and we celebrate with them. Uh, in our prayers, uh, Mary Alice Smith uh, is in hospice care, and we ask that you keep her and her daughter Betsy and uh, all of the family in your thoughts and in your prayers. And we surround with our prayers Jill Bross as she mourns the path, passing of her father, Glenn Hansen, on May 6th. We would also like to remind you that the memorial service for Sandy Wilch, who passed away uh, about a year ago on June 10th, is scheduled for Thursday, May 27th. That's this Thursday. Uh, there'll be a visitation from noon until 1 and then the memorial service at one o'clock. We hope that you can be with us. Let us remember these and the unspoken loved ones of your thoughts and your prayers in silent prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, we have heard your voice and we have come to follow your way, to be part of your flock. And we give to you our thanks for the gift of your Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. We pray that our lives might be open to the Spirit's work. We are here this morning hearing your word and saying our prayers not because of who we are, but because of who you are. We've heard your voice calling each of our names, and we have felt your strong claim upon our lives. Keep us close to you, dear God. Persevere with us, keep loving us, for we don't always know exactly how to return your love. Keep being the shepherd of our souls and guiding our way. We offer our thanksgiving for the comfort and love of this fellowship. We pray that you will guide her path now and into the future. It is in your son's name we pray. Amen. I'm still not used to not taking a collection. <laughs> Needless to say, we do appreciate your continued financial support for the church, and there are baskets at the exits uh, if you would like to use them. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, your son taught us that it is more blessed to give than to receive. And so we bring our gifts and offerings as symbols of our love for you and for your church. We pray that your blessings be upon them in all the ways they are used to bring light and life and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen.